Davis Hansen, senior fellow at the Hoover Institution, and uh, just an extremely bright man who comments on so many things, American culture, not just immigration and so forth. Y- you know, one of the things that bothers me is, on the one hand, we have a lawless president. I don't think there's any question about that. The Republicans say he's lawless. And then they're going to pass another law and expect this president to comply with border enforcement? What are they thinking, sir? Oh, it's going to be like Obamacare. He's going to, we're going to pass comprehensive immigration. He's going to get up one morning and say, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to enforce the DREAM Act and the amnesty, but I just don't think I'm going to enforce the uh, border security elements. He's going to pick and choose which element of the so-called comprehensive legislation he, he finds satisfying. Everybody knows that. I don't know why they would trust him after they told us not to trust him. And do, you think, do you think if the Republican Party goes down this path that it is committing ultimately suicide? Yeah, I am because they don't have any margin of error. They have a, they're they're really well positioned given the disaster of Obamacare and the president's poll ratings and and a lot of, on a lot of issues. There's a populist wedge for them to get in. Whether it's you know everything from gun control to debt to interest rates, they have a a really good message for the working people. But if they split the Republican base and it doesn't go out in the numbers necessary, they're going to destroy all of their chances. For two, and there was no need for it. They could have delayed it. They could have done one issue on border security at, at one time and just concentrated on that. But it, I don't know what it is. It's something about the Washington mentality or the New York-Washington nexus where they don't like to be called racist or nativist. Or, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but it's going to divide the Republican Party at a time it can't afford to be divided. Well, so do you think it's time for a new Republican Party? I've been talking about this new leadership that can actually articulate well, some of the things you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, every issue. I look at gun control, and I think, wow, they're beating us up on gun control. Why don't we just say the elites have private you know, private security with guns, and the poor in Detroit and Chicago are killing people, and we're going after the average guy who has, can't outsource his security that has guns, or whether it's interest rate. A guy plays by the rules. He puts $100 a month, and he retires, and he's got no money, uh, with no interest. See, how can he live on that when everybody's rushing to Wall Street with inside contacts and making money? The poor get debt relief. Every single issue, the way I see it, and the immigration is a really good one, because that's basically against the working class of America and for the corporate uh, La Raza elite. There's a populist message to be given, and, and we just don't seem to... Maybe it's because we don't represent them anymore. Or we, we just sort of... I don't know. We want to be liked by all. Uh, I guess the idea is to be liked by NPR and PBS and New York Times. Well, and I don't think that that's we can we can nominate. I like John McCain. I like Mitt Romney. And we can always make the argument we need a moderate. We're going to lose every time mm-hmm. by being liked. Well, Victor Davis Hanson, maybe it's just not a conservative party anymore. No, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. But I'm, So what is it? I don't know what it is, but I think it's a more conservative version of the Democratic Party. But I'm not so sure it's a conservative country. I hope it is. But there's a lot of people who, you know, came out in droves to reelect this guy who's basically a European socialist twice. So it's, it's, and this is what I'm getting at that the people who are against Obama have got to unite and they've got to do this. So why is this leadership deliberately trying to estrange and alienate 70% of the people who will go out and vote? And they're not asking for a lot, Mark. They're just saying, you know what? You can't trust this president right now. He will not enforce all the elements of a settled law. So don't deal with him. Just do one thing at a time and give him do border security. See if he enforces it. If he does, then go to something else. But do not do it comprehensive right now when you know that if it were to pass, he's going to pick and choose and he's going to make you in a laughing stock. He's going to not only make you look ridiculous, he's going to make you look weak. And I don't know what he's going to resurrect Obama. Every time he's down at forty percent, they do something that resurrects him. So I'm pessimistic. You know, you, you know this border security issue. I mean, you know, they used to run on law enforcement, Republicans. They used to run on national security. They used to run on fighting terrorism and so forth. Uh, I, what, what I, is, I, yeah, I don't, I don't understand, Mark. What's nativist or what's illiberal about just simply saying that California rates forty seventh? And math and science in the public schools, and 40% of the students do not speak English as their first language. The problem is you're not allowed to tell the truth. I mean, that's, I, that's the I, truth. I that's the truth. And why, is, why, do, 
What's so bad about saying that 56% of incoming freshmen at California State University system, the largest university system in the world, have to have remedial education? And what's so bad about saying we can take 100,000 legal immigrants per year, assimilate them, integrate them, intermarry like the Italians, but we can't do a million, especially when they come without English, without a high school diploma, and illegally. That's impossible, and the result of it is what's the, the subtext behind the California f- financial collapse, the educational collapse, the exodus, is illegal immigration. Everybody knows it. Nobody will talk about it. It's destroyed the state. It did. It's, and it's, it's, it's the reason the state is destroyed. Everybody knows that. Nobody wants it's Whether it's Medi-Cal or the DM, non-functional DMV or the lack of infrastructure because we went from 40% investment in our freeways and highways to 7 why we jumped up on Medi-Cal and all the rest. Nobody can say about it because Latinos are 40%. A lot of Latinos don't support illegal immigration, but when they look to conservatives and conservatives are not strong, they think, you know what, I'm not going to go out on a limb when these conservatives are so scared of our activists. Why should I go out on a limb? When is the last time the president or Republican leader even used the word assimilation? I don't even hear them saying that. I don't either. I don't either. I, I don't understand it. And here... I don't think it's going to work to for the Republicans to pick and choose this minority candidate or this female candidate and put them on in front of a couch and say, look, we're inclusive. What they need to say is we've got to stop looking at people as gender or race or class and as people. We want to look at people as people. And then when they got, they got to go on the offensive, that reply to the State of Union, I thought, wow, they're really going to hit Obama because he's lying, that he tried to stop fracking, he tried to stop horizontal drilling, and now he's claiming credit for it. That is such a lie and hypocrisy. Nothing. Nothing. And I thought, wow, they're going to tax the young for a medical uh, service that they don't use and they can't afford to transfer wealth to the elite who will use it a lot, who could afford it, and she's going to really nail him on it. Nothing. So the, even the Republican establishment response to the State of the Union was, we stand for this. and we're I had to shut it off. I couldn't stand it, to be honest I with couldn't, you. I couldn't either. I mean, you could... We, you need to hammer Obama all the time on he's a hypocrite. He's a uh, he's created a wealthy Google, Apple, uh, Silicon Valley grandee party who it gets all it wants from Obama. And then it talks about the poor and then everybody in between is like a clinger. And that's a big opening for the Republican Party. But why try to Im- be a Democratic Party light? I don't know. But it's everywhere. You know, Victor uh, Davis Hanson, I agree with you completely about this. And the opportunities are enormous. You know, the truth is, Obama is a weak president, given his record, his propaganda, created enormous opportunities. And it seems like we nominate people who are like the people who are incapable of dealing with it. Yeah, I think we just need to say, I don't really care what your gender, your race, your class, but I want somebody who cares about the middle class and can make these arguments that this president favors the very wealthy uh, liberal elite and he's creating a dependent culture for everybody on the bottom and he does not care about the middle class. He finds them without the romance of the poor and without the connections of the elite. And as far as he's concerned, they don't matter. And then you have a guy that looks like he's actually... Like Reagan picked up a chainsaw or something, done something, and we need to, to to get a man of the people who's a conservative. But man, trying to outrace and outclass and outgender the Democratic Party is a losing proposition. Nah, it's dead. Let me ask you this: What would you tell John Boehner right now if you could speak to him? I could say he's sitting on a volcano because uh, he needs every conservative, every Republican, every Libertarian to get out there and vote. And one of the things that uh, is important to them is not breaking U.S. federal law and allowing blanket amnesties uh, when they know that it's going to un- unravel the American experiment. And it's also going to empower the Democratic Party for 40 years. Everybody knows that, that Hispanics will say, oh, wow, we're going to be this and this and this. But for now, they look at the Democratic Party as big public employee, high taxes, more entitlements, uh, sort of a a Patron culture from Mexico. That's what they see, whether it's right or not. I know they're entrepreneurs, but right now, statistically, there is no evidence that issues like gay marriage and abortion uh, are going to flip the entire Hispanic population. It's just not going to happen. You can be uh, against abortion in Hispanic and vote for an abortionist if they're for big government. That's, That's just a statistical fact, and it's just a fantasy that's spun somewhere in Washington that it's not. 
And so you agree with Milton Freeman, who said decades ago, you cannot have open immigration in a welfare state. No, you can't. And uh, I don't think you can ever have illegal immigration because it erodes the entire fabric of the law. It says, I can pick and choose which laws I, I want to follow. And once you go down that slippery slope, then everybody can do it. And it's not just that they came in illegally. Every day that the person resides, he's confronted with questions of honesty. Here's a federal affidavit. Here's a doctor's appointment. And when you keep saying repeatedly that you are a citizen when you're not, and you're not punished for it, then it creates a climate of lawlessness. And we always, that's what's happened in California. We have the strictest laws, we're the least free people in the world, and yet in some ways, if you go out in the middle of the interior, we're the most free. There's no law being enforced. People get pulled over for no license, no registration, they're not arrested. So it's, a, it's chaos and then sort of an anal retentive legalistic system for anybody not a legal alien. I don't understand it, it's, it's, it's uh, surreal. It is surreal, and it's almost like the second-class citizen is the citizen. Is the, he is the citizen. And, you know, I've had three people run into my vineyard, and the highway patrolman laughed and said they have the three no's. They have no license, no registration, and no insurance. Ha, ha, ha. I said, can I take the car and impound it? No, no, that's against the law. And uh, can I have the guy come back and pay for the damage? No, you can't do that. I said, what if I were to do that? You'd be sued. You'd be arrested. So everybody understands that, that that's the subtext in California. There's two different cultures. There's a culture of the sanctuary. And I mean, can you imagine a sanctuary city where we say this city is not uh, subject to federal law? Can you imagine a conservative city saying, you know what, oh. everybody in Salt Lake uh, is not subject to federal law on abortion or gay marriage. It's just separate. And, they were to be and, and you know what, though? We raised that with the Supreme Court in the immigration case involving Arizona, and they completely ignored it. How can it possibly be that Eric Holder doesn't prosecute cities or sue them uh, that are sanctuary cities or sanctuary states because they say they have, they control all immigration issues, and then Arizona tries to piggyback federal law and protect its citizens and borders, and they're not allowed to do that, though. doesn't even make like any the sense, does the it? The argument of the old Confederacy that uh, we don't, we don't recognize the federal post office. We don't recognize the federal armory in Georgia. So that's what San Francisco is. It says, you know what, as long as you come to San Francisco and you're an illegal alien, federal law doesn't apply to you. And then we just passed a law in the legislature that said that a California law enforcement officer cannot transfer an illegal alien in his custody to, to a federal authority. Nullification. Yeah, it's, that's what it is. Like the old Confederacy. Nullification. And that creates a general, that's what the Republicans should be seizing on, that creates a general climate of cynicism, and it means that if you're voluntarily paying your income tax or you're, vo or you're stopping at a stop sign, you say, you know what, there is no law anymore. Why should I follow this when everybody around me is exempt? And it's sort of a postmodern relativism. Everything depends on the social context, the economic context, the gender context, the racial context, whether it's right or wrong or true or false. And I just think historically that's just a, a path to Armageddon, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Victor Davis Hanson, you're not only one of the smartest men, you're also a very courageous man, and I want to thank you for coming on the program. Well, thanks for having me, Mark. All right, God bless you, and good luck.